Hello. The Society of Architectural Historians is a charity supporting learning, education and research with a membership comprising professionals in architectural history and keen amateurs, many in advanced years. On the brink of lockdown, a President's Lecture was delivered at York's Humanities Research Centre before an audience of eight. The speaker was engaging, the subject matter informative and entertaining, so this disheartening disaster was unexpected because the Society was engendering a renaissance, successfully forging new partnerships with hotspots such as York in academe, conservation, architecture and archives across the nation. Then we were all locked down. Architecture is best appreciated personally, so the indefinite postponement of site visits, tours and archive study sessions caused dismay. The announcement of a visit to Oxford's buildings and architectural collections was scheduled to launch on the 1st of April with a new website commissioned as part of the Society's modernisation. Due to the uncertainties of the pandemic, in the light of the university's closure to visitors and potential tour participants' vulnerability, this event could not proceed. But all was not lost. The outdated website had frustrated everyone, particularly some members whose unfamiliarity with technology rendered it difficult to use. As part of the Renaissance, able young architects and architectural historians built an attractive, easily navigable site, running alongside and increasing the interwoven with the traditional print outputs of the prestigious journal Architectural History and the chatty magazine The Architectural Historian. Formerly static, text-dense web pages have been replaced with a consistently edited What's On calendar. Space for news and events means blogs relating to subject-specific themes, like a thread on the architecture of health, are complemented by topical pieces as the series celebrating queer architecture for Pride Month in June, and responses to the Black Lives Matter movement, like discussion of the demounting of statues, particularly pertinent to architectural history. This shift, embodying a long overdue academic and pedagogical modernization, has enabled this community to cohere and expand, augmented by social media publicity and new forms of engagement as Twitter takeovers. A social isolation became established, so potential criticism of change gave way to appreciation that membership benefits were now more varied, plentiful and relevant. For instance, this agile intuitive platform has dynamic user-friendly pages and simple registration forms, enabling technically inexperienced people to grow in confidence with booking and registering for a range of new events at present free while encouraging donations. Because most trustees and many active members are experienced in teaching through images, we took tentative steps into virtual programming. In June, the same Neil Jackson, whose talk was badly attended, reimagined a trip to Saltaire, delivered as a virtual walking tour on Zoom, enjoyed not as formerly by 25, but by nearly 200 existing and potential new members. Indeed, responding to the revitalised accessible content, membership has increased. Initially, less tech-savvy people needed support joining sessions, but the sim system's simplicity and members' appreciation of the Society's willingness to adapt means they now enjoy events like seminars generally hosted from Senate House London and Lincoln College Oxford, now viewable internationally. The hard-working team of volunteers are leveraging their networks, aiming to create a dedicated first stop UK hub for those interested in architectural history, exploring the potential of formats beyond the webinar. These are intended to sit alongside in-person events when the new normal permits. Obviously hosted from our homes, some sessions so sociably foster friendly informality with spontaneous interruptions by pets or offspring. 
celebrating the reopening of public houses and partnering the blog series on the architecture of the boozer, a pub quiz is scheduled. Short films and podcasts, walks and talks are in development. At the other end of the academic spectrum, the repurposed International Symposium, in partnership with the REBA and the Architectural Association, and now comprising four lengthy sessions with scholars from as far afield as California, articulates the familiar academic lexicon of bursting library shelves and untidy studies, all carefully recorded for future use. Posters are published online. Following the traditional surgeon's mantra, see one, do one, teach one, we've become emboldened to approach third parties, offering them a platform and negotiating how best to showcase their site, research or conservation projects. A short season on the arts and crafts in development will continue a virtual tour of Philip Webb's Standen and a socially distanced discussion between a scholar and the biographer of architect Edwin Morfe. It will culminate in a series tracking the conservation of William Morris's Kelmscott House, blending film of the empty structure, a discussion of Kelmscott's contents and drinks reception at London Society of Antiquaries, and concluding with the house and contents reunited at some point in the distant future. This fusion of professional and social, virtual and personal, intimate and global, offers sustainable potential for demographically and geographically expanding audiences in future. Rather than the SAHGB bringing news from nowhere, it aims to offer news from and to everywhere. As the society strapline indicates, all places, all periods, all welcome. <laughs>